Okay. Well, we'll we'll get going, especially keeping Jennifer up in Hong Kong. I almost <laughs> or Jennifer, I almost feel bad. Um, so we've got Emily Bosno, who's the head coach at uh, at Pitt, brand new program. Um, she's going to be talking to us uh, about the challenges of putting together uh, a lacrosse program, a D1 program, um, and then having COVID thrown into the mix. Um, some challenges, some successes, um, things that are going on. Um, for people that are tuning in, there is a Q&A at the bottom. And if you could use that to ask your questions, we'd like to filter this through so we can make sure we comply with some NCAA regulations. Um, and that way I can, I can go through these. Promise we'll try and get to anything. But um, Emily and I were talking. We just want to make sure, like, ask any questions and, and let's fire this away and make it as interactive as possible. Um, so without further ado, I will let you introduce yourself and give your background on it. But Emily, thank you for coming aboard. Thank you. Um, I'll start this by saying my dog's walking around right now and the initial sound that you may have been hearing was her chomping on her bone and I just took it away. So she's starting to get a little anxious. So hopefully, um, you know, she, she may make an appearance um, shortly. So uh, just bear with us here. Um, but thank you for having me. I'm really excited um, to be able to share kind of my journey uh, at the University of Pittsburgh with you. Um, you know, I am, uh, we were just talking, I'm a Brooklyn native, um, you know, so I know there's a couple Canadians on here. So I'm excited to, you know, represent, um, you know, in, in, in a, a worldwide kind of way as well. Um, but I'm actually going to go ahead and pull up a PowerPoint. Um, again, bear with me. I haven't had as much experience um, sharing as maybe some other coaches out there. So um, I know I'm kind of doing this right, but um, so here I'm just gonna take you through this, through this presentation and, and this first page is gonna talk about me. And so this is gonna be a little bit of our, of my background here. Um, hopefully that question that just came in wasn't that you can't see anything. Um, but my story here, um, I, I am from, Brooklyn, Ontario. I grew up in the Canadian lacrosse, um, you know, uh, system. Uh, my family, I think, is really important to this story. Um, you know, my we came from a very blue collar family. Um, you know, I have three younger siblings, all box and field lacrosse at at various levels. Um, and and my dad, in particular, is the person I like to focus on when I tell this story because. Um, you know, he was a business owner and he started, you know, um, pretty small and, and, and now is in a great position where, um, you know, is obviously supporting our family to, um, you know, the way that he could only dream. Um, and so I like to use his story um, in this process because a lot of the experiences and the things that I'm bringing to my program, I learned and I got to see and be a part of growing up. So this was the foundation of who I was as I kind of went through you know, my experience playing lacrosse. Um, so then you get into my playing experience. I went to Donald A. Wilson. For those who don't know, it was a high school that started my freshman year of high school. So I was a part of this inaugural school and team. Um, and this is when I started playing lacrosse. Um, and, and this is kind of what sparked my interest growing up to be a lacrosse coach. Um, you know, I knew I wanted to go be an educator that was always the plan. And then I kind of moved into lacrosse, um, obviously go hand in hand together. Um, and then I went on to play division one lacrosse at Detroit Mercy in its inaugural year as well. So as a player, I have a ton of experience, um, you know, going through the process of building a program. Um, you know, I think my experience was very different as a player. I know what I liked and what I didn't like. And, and a lot of those things I'm looking forward to bringing to my program um, here at Pitt. And then I was fortunate to be a part of, of Team Canada um, in, in the last two World Cups. And through these experiences, and when we go into my coaching experience, I think, again, you see that building mentality. I didn't start, you know, going through Canada lacrosse like a lot of my peers. I did the complete opposite. I went, I learned, I built myself as a player um, and then continued. And, and you know, I, I have to um, thank Canada lacrosse because that's where I think I truly hit my peak as a player. Um, you know, so these experiences continuing to build me to where I, I am. And that took me to my coaching experience where I really got to apply 
the things I had learned. Um, and just like my playing experiences, my first coaching experience was at a second year um, of college. So I was at uh, Winthrop University um, for two years where I worked in the second and third season of that experience. Um, again, learning from, you know, from, from John Sung, actually, who uh, is now at Virginia Tech, um, went on to work at James Madison. And you can see, again, I'm building myself. I'm taking myself to that next level. Um, and at James Madison, over the four years there, we were able to accomplish something pretty, ex <laughs> pretty exciting. Um, you know, as a coach, um, we won the national championship in 2018. And that was, you know, obviously the peak of my coaching career so far. Um, and, and, um, you know, it was a really important building opportunity for me. And, and what I take into this program now at Pitt is I've seen the end goal of what I'm trying to do here. You know, I got to play and coach at a new university, um, see the ups and downs, and I got to see what a 50 year um, program looked like and what I wanted to build here at Pitt. So this opportunity, you know, didn't scare me. I think it's an opportunity that kind of makes sense in my experience. And so that's kind of where, um, how I got to the University of Pittsburgh. Um, you know, I was ready to be a head coach. I've always been a type A person. I love being in charge. Um, you know, my nickname is boss, um, mostly because of my last name, but I also like to be in charge. So it works well together. Um, but I think what's really important to talk about before I just dive into what it's like to start a division one program, I think it's important for me to, to mention that the university of Pittsburgh is doing this the right way. Um, I'm fortunate that we've been granted the funding we need to make this a successful program, which is extremely important. Um, college athletics is expensive, um, you know, and especially being at a power five school, um, in order to be competitive, they, we have to be at par with our competitors. So I think that's really important for me to mention because that's not the reality for every division one program out there. Um, and then I'll talk about my timeline because that's a little unique to, um, you know, to my, this this specific um, you know situation. So, really quickly, I'm going to talk to you about some of the benefits and barriers of uh, of starting a program. You know, I try not to look at the barriers too much. I think I can overcome them, but um, the benefits are pretty exciting. Okay, the first two are really important, and this is where I'm going to drive the majority of this conversation is is creating culture and building leadership. I think this is probably the one area that the majority of the coaches in the country get a little bit of get a little jealous. Um, I get to start it my way. I get to start that culture. I get to be a part of every step. Um, and we get to build the leadership the way we want, opposed to going into a program that's already established and trying to change or alter something that's already been established. So these are huge benefits for me, um, you know, and I get to pair them along with my philosophy. So this is something I'm particularly excited about. Um, the equal opportunity part, I think for players coming in, having that equal opportunity is, is really something that excites them. Um, you know, if you're a freshman joining a, an established program, there's always going to be opportunity to play. The best 12 are always going to be the ones that hit the field, right? The ones that are playing at their best. Um, but at Pitt, we don't have established roles. We don't have, um, you know, people that are going, that you're going to have to fight over. Everyone is coming in with a clean slate. And so that equal opportunity was something that I think, especially our recruits found a lot of enjoy or found a lot of passion for. Um, the personal growth part, it's huge. We're going to talk about that throughout this entire process because it's going to tie in with the leadership and the culture. Um, uh, I love this comment. They don't know what they don't know. Shelly Claysbach at James Madison used to say this all the time to the upperclassmen. It's our job, or she would say, it's our job as the upperclassmen and the coaching staff to teach the younger athletes, you know, how we behave and how we respond to things and how we approach certain situations. And so for us as a coaching staff, um, you know, we're going to be able to say, you know, they don't know what they don't know. Everything that they do every day, every time we step on the field, we're going to help dictate that standard and that structure. Um, and then you look at the next point, it kind of just ties in with what I said, we set the standard. Um, so every opportunity for conflict, every opportunity for competition, every opportunity for personal growth, um, uh, or setbacks is an opportunity for us as coaches 
to be setting a standard early that we can continue to meet or exceed uh, instead of having to, to um, go back or change. Um, and so we're pretty excited about that opportunity as well. Um, and then we're playing in the ACC. So for those of you that don't know, it's the you know elite lacrosse conference in the country right now. Um, so this is a huge benefit. It's also gonna be on the barriers list. Um, but it's a huge asset because I think, you know, it draws in a certain caliber of athlete, which again is going to put me at a bit more of an advantage than maybe some other newer programs. When I go over into the barriers, um, you know, some of these are things that are easy to overcome, but some of them are a little bit more challenging. And, um, the first one, getting everyone to buy into the dream, I think is sometimes it's easy and, and it's, you know, um, I have to really share that vision and really get them to see it. But, um, you know, some people don't want the challenge um, and, and I think, um, or they have doubts. And so I think that's been challenging for us, um, the recruiting process specifically, um, you know, but we always talk about you have to be all in to start something. You have to be, um, you know, because when we talk about setting those standards and setting that leadership, Every way that I react or I communicate in front of my team is setting a standard. And if I can't live by that philosophy every day, um, then it's going to be easy for that to flop and turn on me. So um, getting people to buy, buy into that, it, it's about 100% um, committed and, and, um, and disciplined in this process. Um, playing the long game, this is something I'll talk about. It's a part of my part of my end goal, my plan. Um, but, uh, you know, and we'll talk about the timeline soon as well, but, um, you know, there's a lot of steps that have to be done before we get to the team. And a lot of people want to talk about when the team is here, but that's really not my priority right now. My priority is getting a lot of things in place, putting the right people in place, so that we can create a legacy or we can um, create a strong foundation to build this team up. And so staying committed to where we're going instead of, um, instead of what the goal at the end is gonna be and, and how we're getting there in those steps is really important. Um, lack of game experience, we're gonna talk about a ton. Um, you know, that's an obvious one. I'm going to be dealing with a lot of young athletes that haven't played, um, lack of social experience. This is another big one that we're going to talk about a lot, um, but making good decisions outside of, of my time with them. Um, the ACC being again, a huge competitor, the chance of us going in and losing games, but then having to play, you know, another top five opponent the next, you know, the next week is, is a big part of that. Um, and then the recruiting part, and I say, you know, the last piece, it says COVID and then potential, um, you know, every class that I've been recruiting is impacted right now and, and it's going to impact us as well. Um, you know, I always say we, we recruit athletes off of potential. Um, I don't recruit them based on how good they are now. You know, I need to know that they're going to be better when they get here. Um, and so, you know, not having um, a game, a playing season, not having the training, um, not being out and watching some of these kids playing, that's going to affect um, the, the tra trajectory of what that potential was, you know. Um, I, I mean, I trust that all our girls are out and they're training, and they're doing everything they can, but it doesn't give back uh, playing experience. It doesn't give back, um, you know, their quickness or their ability to read a defense when they're coming in, um, you know, going to do their dodge. So, that's probably, you know, the biggest barrier that I'm concerned about right now with COVID um, and, and starting this new program is, is that potential that we may have to make, you know, some or have to help these players with once they get here. So I'm trying to give pause in case there's questions, but um, our timeline, and this is unique um, well, for us, is, go ahead. No, let me stop. And there was one question, but sure. I don't know if you're going to um, cover it later on but it's mm -hmm. due with recruiting and dead periods right now so uh, oh yeah I mean I'm not going to talk about it, it huge so I'll go ahead and, and okay so the question was with the NCAA dead period continuing and no waivers as of yet for August what are your thoughts for recruiting this summer 
Um, I mean, I think the benefit is, is film. Like, I mean, I probably spend 50% of my work week watching film right now. Um, you know, I think it's, it, it's going to be different for everyone. You know, it depends on, on how much availability, you know, each athlete has to film. We're pretty fortunate right now that if you, if a team went to one of the IWLCA tournaments, um, that film is available to coaches. So we're using that. Um, I think, you know, a lot of it gets put onto the club and the individual is how much are they willing to do to put themselves in front of us. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be hopeful that we're going to have some playing opportunities in the near future that's going to help us make decisions. Um, but I'm trying to prepare, you know, for the worst. And so I'm trying to do my best to, to watch as much film and, and be as, as detailed as possible um, in this process. And I hope that the young athletes out there are doing the same. Um, but that's really kind of, I'm trying to take it one day at a time. And that's really where I think the majority of the coaches are putting their focus, um, you know, and, and, uh, and seeing where this thing goes. But I think that has to be number one is how much can you get yourself out there? Yeah. Well, and it's, it's such a, it's such an evolving situation and, and it varies from region to region, state to state, country to country. So, um, yeah. you know, it's, you're, you're right. You got to be out there. You got to be in front of coaches and, and hope to hell you have film that you, yeah. you had submitted and, and got on board. So, yeah. And there are some athletes that I think are going out there and they're doing a good job of marketing themselves. You know, I think that's a part of this process as well is, um, you know, I see a lot of kids sending me film that is just them in their backyard doing some drills, you know, with their brother or, or sister. Um, you know, and I think that that, you know, it helps as much as it can. It doesn't tell me everything. So, you know, don't get me wrong, but it helps, I think. And, and for some people, it's going to be a deciding factor potentially, you know, so, um, but that's initiative taken on the athletes. And I think something that hopefully we'll start to see a little more of, um, you know, in the next couple of months. Something to be said for initiative and, and yeah. you know, taking the bulls by the horn. Awesome. Exactly. Okay, thanks. Exactly. Yeah, no problem. Um, and I think just kind of going off of that question too, guys, there's a lot of things I'm not going to be able to cover. And I tried to go through some things that you would find helpful or interesting. Um, so if there's something that I just it isn't even in the ballpark of what we're talking about, don't be shy to, to ask those questions as well. Um, but the timeline, again, this is very unique to, um, to Pitt. And I'm really fortunate. They gave me two years to recruit before um, our first playing season. So year one, I'm coming up to the end of year one. Um, I was hired almost a year ago. Um, and the focuses were recruiting camps and building this vision um, that, and you're going to see a lot about the vision and, and um, what we're, our plans are. Year two um, was really building the foundation. Um, I'm gonna have my first class of athletes on. Right now I have 10, um, there's potential for more. Um, we will not have a playing season. So we will practice like a normal team, um, but we will not be um, competing. And actually these three girls here um, are three members of the Pitt club team uh, that will be joining the team in, in, the, um, in the fall. So those, those 10 athletes will come on campus and we're really going to focus on the foundation. And that's really where I think this program and building um, is unique. And, and again, where we're going to focus the majority of this conversation. And then year three in 21-22, that's uh, where we're going to have our first competition season and we are jumping right into the ACC. So a lot of people I don't think know this timeline. And again, why I think it makes Pitt unique, you're not going to see a lot of teams or a lot of schools build a program with this much time. Um, but again, Pitt understands the reality of being in such a competitive conference and the work that's going to need to go into it to be competitive. Um, so goals, you know, for year one to three, um, ultimately I'm trying to create a long lasting foundation. And there's a couple of things and these goals that we're going to go through that I do believe are going to be a big part of this long lasting foundation. And, one is obviously I need to build this team and, and recruiting is a huge part of that, um, you know, because they're going to set that foundation for, for the future. And I have to be able to work with them. I have to be able to mold them. Um, so putting the time into building those relationships um, and camps, this, this was one of, um, you know, and I didn't mention in the barriers, but 
creating a relationship with the athletes in the clubs um, became really important. Um, you know, in the lacrosse world, Pittsburgh isn't a hotbed for lacrosse. Um, you know, the, the athletes in the area obviously know about it. They know the excitement about the University of Pittsburgh. But if you didn't grow up knowing about the University of Pittsburgh, you don't know anything about it. And you don't drive through Pittsburgh to get places. So introducing the city to, to the lacrosse world was really important. Um, creating strong lacrosse fundamentals um, was going to be really important to me in year one. Uh, year two, it's going to be important, but um, again, we want that first group of athletes to be setting the standards. So we needed to make sure that they were, or we need them uh, to be able to kind of hold up to, to what that is. Um, and then this, again, probably the biggest one is the culture and leadership. And that comes from a lot of my philosophy as a coach, which we'll see as well. So the process, I'm not going to go through these on this sheet, um, but I, I kind of put together what I saw as the six step process to get myself um, or to get this program into that long lasting that I wanted, um, create this foundation. And so some of this has already been in play. Some of it we're just starting to kind of attack now. Um, but, you know, step one was creating this dream and building, um, you know, figuring out what we really wanted out of all of this. Um, for me, this step started before I got to the university. Um, I focused on creating this dream or creating this vision um, for my interview. <laughs> you know, I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was getting myself into. I wanted the, the um, university to believe in me. And, um, you know, it went a long way. I have right here, I made this nice booklet of all my plans for what I was going to do when I got here. And, and so um, this started a long time ago and has been continuously built upon since I've been here. And so I needed to obviously develop my philosophy as a coach, uh, as a recruiter, create the team vision, um, obviously extremely important. I'm trying to sell this dream, right? I say creating a dream, but I have to get others to come and follow me. So I needed to sell it to them as well. Um, and so I needed to have an idea of where we were going. Um, the five pillars of pit lacrosse, I'm actually going to share you, share that with you. That's step two. Um, but I had to create this first and then figure out what it was going to mean to the team. Um, so we'll, we'll go into, into more detail about that. And then I really focused on what Pitt had to offer. Um, you know, what was, what was this team going to, going to have, what was going to be special about Pitt? Um, and so, you know, these go into my philosophy, but also what I was excited about, what Pitt was going to be. Um, you know, part of my philosophy is this, I call it the three-part experience. Um, and, and you're going to see, I'm going to talk about happiness a lot throughout this. And, and the three-part experience is a huge, huge selling point for my recruiting process. But I, um, you know, was fortunate to be a part of the James Madison National Championship, as I said. And one of the most unique parts of that program was the athletes genuinely cared for one another. Um, they loved their experience. They were really good at being great academics. They were incredible athletes and they valued their social lives. And I know that some coaches don't, you know, share that same philosophy as me, but I think in order for us to get the most out of our athletes, we, um, they have to be happy. And, you know, that's the only way I think for me to, to um, get the most out of them, for them to enjoy this process and to buy in and to find value in what they're doing. Um, so this was something that was really cool. Pitt, you know, obviously has a lot to offer, but it, it was going to give the athletes that I was looking at, you know, the full experience, which I thought was really important. Um, not to take away from the fact that the fact that academics and athletics are priority, um, but I think there has to be some wiggle room within reason. So, um, you know, I, I think that's really important. Not every coach is going to agree with me, but um, again, the opportunity piece, we talked about that academics um, is huge. Pitt was just announced for the second time, um, the best Northeast university in the country. So that was really important to us. And then, um, you know, athletics being in the ACC was huge. And then this commitment to championships was really important. Um, you know, Pitt is going undergoing a lot of changes right now. And, and that's because we're trying to create a, an environment of championships. So obviously really important. 
And then year one, what are we going to get out of it? What are the, what's the goal? And so, you know, I already talked about it, but the foundation of this program, and these were the areas that we were really going to focus on, which I already kind of spoke about. We have some questions in there. I saw some things flashing. Yeah. Yeah. A couple. And okay. I mean, very, very much um, to do with your year one. So oh, sweet. Uh, one of the questions was, you know, how much have you talked to other pit coaches such as Jeff Capel and, um, uh, I think it's Pat Narduzzi is the football coach yep. to help set foundations of the program. So I think that that's, um, you know, <laughs> the COVID's really hit us here. Um, so when we came in football and basketball were, st were like really at the, <laughs> at the start of, uh, of their seasons. And so we haven't had the time that we would like to be with them. Now that doesn't mean I haven't had great conversations with them and their staffs. Um, you know, I think, in particular um, has a great foundation and platform for where his team is going to go in terms of, of leadership and, and foundation. Um, and, and I've been fortunate to be able to see some of those documents and, and, you know, I'm excited to learn from him. Uh, Jeff Capel, I, you know, I love basketball. <laughs> um, I probably went to more pit basketball games than I did anything this year. Um, you know, and, and he has a very unique program because they're extremely young. Um, their three, uh, you know, standouts this past year were, were two sophomores and a freshman. So I'm, um, our plan post COVID was to really sit down with him and talk about that experience because that's what our team is going to be built off of. So, um, you know, I haven't been able to dive into that as much as I want to, but I know that they're going to be a strong resource, especially like I said, with Capel going through, um, and sorry, for those of you that don't know, Jeff Capel is our basketball coach, uh, and, and Pat Narduzzi is our football coach. Um, both are doing great things here at Pitt. Uh, but uh, yeah, Capel has been dealing with some things that I think we're going to have to manage as well as a young team. So I'm excited to see how he did that. And, and one of the things I got, I was really excited about was every time you watch them play, they just seem to be improving in terms of maturity. Um, you know, and I think there's some ego management that you have to deal with as, as a young team as well. So um, that's something that I know that we're going to have to focus on um, going through this process. Awesome. Yeah. That. No, it's, that's great. I mean, Capel was a Carolina killer when I was at school. Uh -huh. um, so I can't say I was a big Duke fan at the time, but I followed his coaching career afterwards because it's always nice to see what people are doing after, they, after they're done playing. Yeah. Uh, so just a follow-up question to that was on philosophy and whatnot. Um, from one of our friends actually across in the UK. Uh, and I think I know the answer to this, but I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure. But it was number one, did you play box lacrosse growing up? <laughs> um, no, I, um, I, I am the only one in my family that didn't play. And I like telling this story, so I'm going to tell it. But um, so my three other siblings are all younger than me. They actually started playing box lacrosse before I even started playing lacrosse. Um, they, my sister is, she, I didn't want to play with boys. Like, I think that was my problem. I was in like eighth grade, seventh grade, maybe when it was, when my siblings started to play and I was at the age where I didn't really think that was cool. Um, so, you know, shame on me. I wish I had. Um, but yeah, I actually got everyone to switch over to field lacrosse. So that was, that was, a uh, uh, exciting for me, I guess, but yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I feel bad. I never got to play box across, um, but wish I had. That's okay. That leads into the second part. Um, oh, perfect. So same, same person was just yep. wanting to know, would you be introducing any box principles oh, and Canadian question. influence into the pit culture? I love that. So one, I think the Canadian, um, the Canadian lacrosse culture box or field is extremely physical um, and I love that. I think that that's something that connects me with the city of Pittsburgh too. You know, um, we, we talk, I mean, we're the steel city, right? So if you guys don't know, that's what we're, we're the steel city. Um, so, you know, the big rough, tough blue collar, blue chip, like that's who I am. That's how I was raised. And so I'm really excited to have that same thing. Um, I coach the defense or I coach the defense at James Madison. And I hope if any of you had an opportunity to see them play over the last four years, you saw that toughness, that physicality. And that's what I hope to bring here at the university of Pittsburgh. Um, in terms of the offense, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm hoping to hire someone that can take that end of the field over. Um, 
in terms of the actual box across, I'm hoping that this is going to get people excited that, that, that no box across, but Pittsburgh is surrounded by outdoor um, arenas. So I've already gone ahead and made some, some, uh, rented some of these facilities so that we can kind of go play some box across. So I'm really excited about that. Um, one of the big parts about starting a program without a playing season is keeping athletes engaged and inspired and um, giving them opportunities to be competitive and be creative. And so um, I uh, have gone ahead and, and provided some opportunities already within our next fall and spring season um, to introduce the girls to that formal cross and, and to hopefully inspire kind of, um, you know, some, some creativity and some competition. Awesome. Thanks. Em. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay. Step two, the pillars. Um, so creating this pit lacrosse identity. So we're going to see five, um, what I call the five pillars. They're the, the words actually in bold, not in, not highlighted. Um, and I put these words into um, actions. And so this is really, these five pillars are gonna be what I want this program to be built off of, how we are going to approach every situation every day. Um, we're gonna keep these things in mind. And so um, the reason this is step two is because it became really important in the recruiting process. Um, and the words that are gonna be highlighted in yellow are the words that I looked for, the characteristics I looked for in our recruits, okay? so. Grit, you know, we will be tough and resilient fighting for our goals. And resilient became the really important characteristic when we were looking for athletes because we know, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way because people have taken it the wrong way. We know to some extent we are going to face failure, okay? Um, whether it's a game or we're at practice, um, it's in uh, the academics, socially, every single player on our team individually or as a team we are going to face failure to some extent and the athletes need to be able to be resilient and to find ways to overcome it okay and so in the recruiting process we were very explicit with our athletes that we needed players that were not afraid to fail that we they were willing to do that in order for us to get better and so resilient became a really big part of our recruiting process who could show that and how could we evaluate it um, you know, that that was really important, which goes in to passion, because I think that, you know, you have to have that in order to have that grit. And this is probably my favorite one. <laughs> we will be fearless attacking every situation with pride and enthusiasm. And I say that because fearless is probably my favorite word um, to be described or to de describe someone. And I think every athlete that we bring in here, every coach, every person that's a part of this program has to be willing to be fearless. And um, and, and again, that goes into this idea of, of these barriers that we're going to face and being willing to, again, to be faced with, with failure or fear and, and to overcome it and to find a way to push through. And, um, you know, uh, Dom Starza, for those that you know that name, um, he was a head coach at the University of Virginia for years um, and was extremely successful. And, and he always uses the word fearless, that it's the number one attribute he looks for in a leader. Um, and, and it's because they need to be willing to speak up when others don't, don't agree. Um, they need to be willing to put people in their place sometimes to, to challenge the coaches, um, you know, and put themselves out there for the good of the rest of the team. And so uh, I wanted athletes that, that could also show those characteristics or at least didn't shy away from it in conversation. Um, and, and so that's a huge part of, 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 I guess, my philosophy in general, but also the type of athletes that I'm going to be looking for. Uh, dedication, we will be disciplined, committed, committing to our goals. This is probably the hardest to evaluate. Everyone and every parent in the country thinks that they are dedicated and disciplined. Um, so, it, you know, it becomes harder to, to evaluate, but I think this goes, um, you know, how much are you willing to do to reach your goals? And for us in this recruiting process, if athletes wanted to be a part of, of building something, you knew that there was some type of dedication because it wasn't going to be easy, you know, and that was, that was a conversation that we had, um, again, with a lot of the recruits was this isn't going to be easy. Um, family, we build relationships, finding value in people. Um, again, we're going to talk about building that culture and leadership as we kind of move forward. And none of this is going to be easy without building strong relationships that we can push each other in. 
um, and and we truly find the value in, in those people. And so, um, you know, we're going to continue to build off of that. But with the failure or the chance of you know making mistakes along the way, having the people that we're going to support you is going to be is going to be really important to our emotional um, ability to manage through this. And then character was the last one. We will make good decisions, helping us become stronger individuals and community members. And ultimately, that's what we're doing here. We're building stronger, independent young women and uh, or young men, you know, wherever you are. But, um, you know, the word stronger was really the focus because we wanted people that wanted to be the best that they could be. And, and um, you know, we're going to help them make the best decisions. And this is where we think there'll be the most transformation over the four years that we're going to have our athletes. Uh, so step three was introducing the lacrosse community to Pittsburgh. I mean, this was challenging to some extent. Um, you know, nobody knows what the academics, athletics, or, you know, me as a head coach was going to be like, um, you know, in this process. So educating, uh, you know, the lacrosse community was really important. I would say the majority of athletes that are committed to us have never been to Pittsburgh. Um, so that was a challenge in itself, convincing people to come to see it. Um, you know, huge focus for this last year and next year is going to be camps. We were lucky to host some very successful camps. Uh, we did go ahead and do some satellite camps. I hope that we made it to some areas of some people that are on this listening. Um, these were five areas that we managed to go to. This was impacted by COVID. Uh, we had a couple other camps, um, you know, schedule. We have one for Oshawa. I was going to my hometown. I was excited. Um, but, you know, obviously some of that got pushed back. Um, and then the last one that really got pushed back by COVID, and this is probably where I'm the most disappointed, was um, we were hoping to get an advantage on our peers. We were going to be spending weeks on end at high school games. Um, and, you know, that's not a common recruiting practice these days because the high school season is the same as the college season. So this is where we had hoped to have some advantage. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we're back to square one, but we're, we're managing um, as we can. So this is where I hope that you're going to get a lot of um, insight to, uh, oh, do we have a question? Is that just me? No. Nope. Okay. Just more of a comment. Um, oh, okay. Just oh, I can't see his comments. I'm sorry, guys. Definitely, definitely something that you don't see, which is, I, I believe that was related to getting out to be able to see the high school. Uh, oh yeah. Games, which you're right. It, I mean, it, it's it's absolutely terrible. Yeah. Kind of conflicting wise. Um, yeah. And then I, I, you know what, I didn't see one from earlier, but uh, I was talking about girls box lacrosse and mm -hmm. um, comment from from a fellow in Michigan just said here in Detroit we love our lax girls from Windsor. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what Windsor lacrosse is like, but uh, that's pretty awesome. I mean, I haven't, I don't think I've been, I went to school in Michigan, obviously. So, uh, I know the Michigan area that well, and they're picking up box lacrosse too. Cause I remember I went in a couple, couple years ago and they were playing. So that's awesome. Um, but step four, this is, you know, I'm going to get into a lot more detail of these things. I'm hoping not to bore you, but I think this is, this is really where you're going to see a lot of our focuses um in the culture and leadership and this is where i am the most passionate i i know that i am um this is um and this is from my experience as a player um you know at detroit i think there were a lot of great things that happened and there were some things that i'd like to see be better but every part of this process is you're learning as you go um and i know that we're i'm going to make mistakes as a coach as well and i know that our athletes are going to make mistakes and um, and that, that's a big part of this is, is, um, how do you create a foundation of culture and leadership that is going to continue to improve, to really create that, that legacy or that longevity that I keep saying. And, um, you know, so as a player, I saw what I liked and what I didn't, um, you know, and obviously I was a young player and I'm a very different person now than I was then. So please take it with a grain of salt. Um, and then, you know, my experience at James Madison, the, the, um, relationships and the positive leadership was insane. And, and to this day, we will say we won that because of our senior class and their leadership and ability to inspire the people around them. Um, and now, you know, for those of you that know the United, the, the U S, um, NCAA 
championship experience is very slim. Um, you know, it's the same five schools that are competing for national championships. Um, and very rarely do you see a mid-major or a new program, um, you know, break that mold. Um, actually, I was listening to a podcast by Gary, uh, with Gary Gate the other day, and, and his was, he talked about how challenging it is for him as an ACC Power 5 elite program, how hard it is for him to even get his team there. Um, and what I think is the defining um, characteristic is the leadership and the culture and can your team come together when it matters. Um, and that was something that I know we had at James Madison and what I'm, I'm planning on building here. Um, you know, and the lacrosse piece is obviously huge, but our success isn't going to matter if we don't have these two things along with it. Um, so going into how or what we're going to focus on to build the culture and the leadership. And the first one, and these are not in any particular order, so don't think that community involvement is number one. Um, uh, so community involvement was very, or is very important to me. Again, I'm trying to do as much to improve myself. Um, and so I do listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, don't ask me which ones, because I just look and see what one looks good today, and then I try it. Um, but, but I had one, it was about culture, and they talked about um, – Two things. If you're building a culture that you want to last and sustain, the community and the people, all the people that are be, going to be connected to it need to buy into that success and to that foundation as well. It can't be a small group of people trying to sustain something. All the people touch it need to be bought in and be a part of that program. And so for me, I looked at it in three ways. There's th three different groups of, of, of people that we really want to connect with to help us build this, this program. And, you know, obviously that was the athletics at Pitt and that's not just, um, you know, the department, it's also the athletes. We want all of Pitt athletics to buy into this program. You know, the city of Pittsburgh is really excited to have lacrosse. I think they're going to totally love it. It's physical. <laughs> it's, it's tough. Um, and exactly what, what the steel nation loves. Um, and then, you know, the Pittsburgh, uh, the University of Pittsburgh community, um, you know, the alumni and the people that we're, we're hoping are going to become great fans. Um, and then the other part of this podcast that they talked about was providing opportunities to lead. And, um, you know, I think this is a big part that we forget about a lot. And it's going to be a part of it, it is a part of my entire philosophy since I heard this. And what they said was, um, a lot of people come in and they think, you know, you're, you have athlete A, we'll call her Annie, and Annie is well respected. She works her butt off. The team loves her. She doesn't cause any problems. And because of that, you decide she's going to be the captain. She's going to be the leader. Well, if Annie's never been given opportunities to learn to lead, then how do I expect her to lead this group of people? Um, you know, I don't, you can't, you're, you're just hoping that she makes the right decisions because she's a good person. And, you know, a lot of leading is instinct, so don't get me wrong, but I think we do as coaches need to give them opportunities to become great leaders. And so, uh, one of the examples that this coach had given in this podcast was community service and how, um, you know, it, it doesn't always seem exciting or, or a big part of, to the team, but it does provide them opportunities to be leaders um, and, and to have pride in something that they're doing. So it's a great stepping stone to kind of getting where we need to go. Um, academic standards, this is going to be really important. Um, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I think, you know, we all know that obviously academics is a huge part of this process or experience. Um, but the standards part is the one that I really want to focus on is, is starting early and quickly as to what our standards are going to be academically. Um, you know, and, and those of you that have kids that are, are you know, at college or, or have experienced this, you know, freshman year is always the hardest year. So how can I prepare them the best, you know, in year one to create that strong standard early on? Social experience. This one's so fun. Only because it causes me the most stress. So, um, you know, I, I told you, I believe in it. You need to have a three-part experience. I want them to have a social life. Don't get me wrong. They need to be happy. But it, you know, this is probably without social experience coming to college and it, without having people to lead you into making good social decisions, um, this becomes the most 
uh, terrifying. Um, you know, and so this is going to be a huge education piece for us. Um, I, I can, I have a Zoom call with, uh, with our girls, incoming girls, um, you know, in the next week or so, and I'm already going to have this conversation with them and we'll continue to have it probably once a week until, <laughs> until year two. Um, so, you know, reminding them what the sacrifices are, what, where we're trying to go and why, um, you know, what kind of reputation we're trying to build here at Pitt. Um, you know, again, we're building something. So whatever happens, you know, in our, you know, our first month of school, you know, that's how we're going to be viewed as a program. And, and so, you know, making sure that we're teaching our athletes how to manage, um, you know, peer pressure, how they're going to manage, um, you know, their Friday nights is really important to us and making sure that we're making smart decisions. And so I think that this is going to become a more heightened um, focus for us just because, you know, and I hate to say this, but it's the reality of our sport is, you know, there is a big social aspect to it. And so, um, teaching the girls young, uh, how to manage that. Um, and then hazing, I mean, as it should be, the laws in Pittsburgh are extremely, um, uh, strict and, um, you know, as they are across the country, but especially in Pittsburgh or in, in Pennsylvania and, this is an area that I don't have any tolerance for, nor should anyone. And, um, but it is extremely easy to cross the line without recognizing it um, because it is such a sensitive topic. And so this is a big part of our, our developing our culture and leadership and being aware of what is out there and what we have to help our girls, um, you know, from, from the start. So these three things are really important, but the exciting ones are the next ones. <laughs> so, um, you know, the first one uh, on this page, how we communicate. So education, um, you know, again, is going to be extremely important. Um, we're young. Managing emotions is, is a big part of this cultural leadership um, development. Um, and, and I say this because, you know, it's one thing socially or off the field, but on the field, you know, our emotions are running hot and we tend to say and do things that we don't always um, mean. And, and so teaching our athletes early on how to respect one another, how to communicate when they are frustrated, how to follow up when things don't go the right way. Um, you know, and, and I, this is something I've, I've had to learn, um, for anyone that knows me on, on this call. I know Steven Taylor was on here at one point. Uh, I don't know if he had to manage me ever, um, you know, as an athlete playing, but, uh, he was a, a, a local ref. Um, so, you know, he got to see me at my best and worst as a young player. Um, but, um, you know, I still to this day make mistakes as a coach um, and have to follow up with the way that I manage my emotion as well. And um, I think that this is a big lesson for a lot of our athletes. And if we're going to create that family environment, we have to be willing to address it uh, when it is uncomfortable. So that's going to be a big focus for us is how we're doing that. Um, how we train. These are three really important things to me and how we're going to start this program. Um, you know, I say with purpose all the time. Right now, we, we communicate with our, our committed kids once a week. We write a nice little letter to them with some lessons, and we talk about um, purpose all the time. I always end every, everything with practice with purpose. Um, you know, if you're going to go out there and throw a ball against a wall, you better mean it, right? Like, don't just go toss the ball against the wall, throw it like you mean it and get yourself better. And, and so that's something that's really important to me. Um, you know, there's going to be value behind everything. Um, and, and another book recently read, uh, uh, legacy. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have read it. If you haven't, it's incredible. They talk about building culture the whole time. Uh, and one of the things they talk about is putting value and purpose to what you're doing. And, and I love doing that as an educator when I'm doing a drill. There's always going to be a purpose. You're always going to know why we're doing it and, and how it's going to make you a better player. Um, because when you give something purpose and you, you give it value to your players, they're going to buy in. They're going to believe in it and they're going to want um, to, to be successful. So really important to me. Extra work. This is a huge one to start starting a program. Um, you know, we can, the school can give us as much money. I can get the best players. There's still going to be a disadvantage for us when we jump into the ACC. 
um, because of the lack of playing experience. And um, so we have to find a way to get ourselves as close to that, um, to, to our opponents as possible. And if we can get every single player on the team to be giving just a little bit more um, and giving and making that a part of this culture, then we're going to get a little bit closer. Are we going to be there on game day? Maybe not. Like, but can we close those barriers and make it a little, you know, a little tighter? Um, and the last one is how do I create challenges so that we can test all of this? And um, the challenges are going to come at practice. They're going to come through inter-squad scrimmages. They're going to come through weight training. How do we challenge them, put them in uncomfortable situations so that we see their emotion, we see them reacting to situations, and that's when we can evaluate and, and, and teach them, um, you know, how we want to be communicating and working together. So those are the three most important things that I'm going to look in every practice. How are we incorporating that? Um, and some of these things I already have, you know, we already have things in place that are going to help us build those. So if you have specific questions about that, please do ask. Um, and then the last part of this, how we're developing this culture and leadership is, is creating that family atmosphere and this is one of the things that I think is really special. Um, and, and I've been able to have conversations with our, our incoming class and then the 21s as well, is our relationship as coaches is going to be so much, so different than any other class will ever have. Um, and, and that's because we're gonna be involved in a lot of decisions that make, they make in their lives, you know? Um, and I, I joke about it with some of the girls, like, yes, I'm going to be your coach and I'm going to be telling you what to do and you're not going to like it all the time. But there are going to be times when I'm going to need to be the person that's helping you manage a, a more uncomfortable situation um, because you don't have the seniors to be leading you through that. So um, this is really important to me. The three things in here, again, I'm extremely passionate about. The first one, respect, roles, and hierarchy. Sounds like really odd things to be put together, but um, you know, in, there's always going to be hierarchy and I put a question mark behind, beside it because, you know, there, the hierarchy is going to be there, but, you know, we have to find a way to respect each individual and each role as we go through this process. And the reason that becomes so important in year one is that by year five, when we have 35 to 40 athletes on the team, and we've grown every year, um, the roles are gonna become more and more diluted just because the, the number of athletes. And we have to be able to respect and inspire one another, even though our roles are gonna be constantly changing. Um, and, and so that's something that's really important to me. Another great book, <laughs> sorry, um, that I just read and I absolutely adore it is Wolfpack. If you're coaching young women, you have to read it. It's incredible. Um, and I'm, it's actually, I'm probably going to have my team read it the first week they're at school. It's like 75 pages. It's extremely short. Um, but they talk about a female empowerment um, and, and the ability to support one another, even when your dreams aren't coming true. And so, um, you know, I think that that's going to be really important for us. Um, and then the last one, you know, selflessness, um, you know, this is a very important quality, in my opinion, as a leader. Um, you have to be willing to do the grunt work. And, um, you know, I think a ton of culture books will tell you, you know, the captain, the senior leader, the coaches, you know, they have to be willing to do, to do everything that they're going to tell anyone to do. And I think, you know, I'm a strong believer in that. You know, if you turn to me and tell me that the freshmen are going to pick up balls, I will throw a fit. I can't stand it. Every single person out there needs to be willing to do to do the work um, to be successful because this isn't about earning respect. It isn't about um, you know having to to um, to you know I don't know earn respect. That's really what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, it's about coming together for the common goal. And and if that's picking up balls at the end of practice, I'm going to do it. Um, you know, and, and, you know, my whole staff is going to do it until the team recognizes the importance of, of how, how to come together and be selfless. Um, any questions about that part? I'm sorry. That was a lot there, but I, this is probably my, I'm most excited about this part. Um, 
somewhat. I mean, it, it, so there is a question in there and a comment. So Chris Marucci from Metro Detroit, and I hope yep. I'm pronouncing that name correctly, wanted to thank you for being an inspiration and helping them um, because apparently he sought some advice from you back in 2013. Oh, great. Um, when they were founding, sorry, uh, when Triumph Lacrosse was founded. Mm -hmm. um, so he just wanted to thank you for that. His question was, for student athletes wanting to pursue careers in nursing, pre-med, yep. uh, biomed, do you envision Pitt being a university that students can legitimately balance those education fields with yeah, I mean, athletics? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, um, I mean, you have to find the right program. I, I mean, not every coach is going to say yes to that. I mean, it's just the reality of of what they're doing. You know, there's there's thousands of kids that want to play lacrosse and and so, you know, I hate to say athletes are, you know, a dime a dozen, but to some extent they are. And so I think you have to find the right programs and the right coaches that are willing to take that chance. Um, you know, at Pitt, um, you know, it, it definitely is an option. I think most programs are going to say pre-med is an option because you're going to go beyond the four years and that's when it's going to get more complex. Um, but it's not that it's not possible. It's that that athlete has to be tremendously disciplined. I've seen a lot of athletes come through pre-med and have to change um, partway through because they're not getting the experience that they want, which isn't a problem. Um, Pitt is definitely an option. Nursing, I would say, is more difficult. Um, I think, you know, it, you know, coaches are willing to work with, with athletes to a certain extent. So I think, um, you know, I'm hoping that it's going to be a place for that, but we don't have anyone right now that's going through that process. Okay. Now, um, we're, we're up approaching that hour that we promised. <sighs> so no, no, I'm not, no, not ending it. I'm just, if you're, if you're good to keep going, I'm sure attendees will, will remain I, on here. Yeah. I don't have much more. Yeah, I could talk about this for days. No, if let's anyone's go. on this call that knows me, they know I like to talk. Okay. So the implementation, I won't go through it too much opportunities to lead. Um, you know, this is something that I'm excited about. Um, you know, James Madison, we had, we had a, a couple people that were in charge of community service every year on the team and equipment. I chose these five areas. Um, and, and next year, each one of our athletes will be put on the committee and, and they'll be in charge of leading these, these. So these are the ways I'm providing opportunities to lead, um, you know, and, and we're, I could elaborate on that, but I don't think I need to. Um, leading through competition, we have these Panther packs. Um, this is common, they're inter-squad teams. Um, I do it with groups of three, uh, sorry, three teams, um, because I think that gives a little bit more ability to, um, to have different competitions and, and um, you know, not just two teams. Uh, we will do weekly lessons, film, and chalk talk on the regular. Um, because again, you saw all the education pieces that we need to provide. So finding ways to give that to them weekly, um, we will be extremely uh, scheduled. So that will happen, um, you know, probably every Monday is what we're looking at. Uh, lacrosse wise, to reach our goals, and we didn't talk a lot about lacrosse, um, but I do intend to have a lot of testing. Um, I hate the word testing. I, I'm not doing it to tell them they're not good enough. I'm not doing it to tell them, um, you know, they need to be, they, they um, are failing. I'm doing it because we want to see where they are and where we need to go to create those standards, like I said, in that foundation year. Um, so we'll be testing often stick work, fitness, um, evaluating constantly 1v1s, dodging where they are, where they need to be um, in order to reach our goals as, as quickly as possible. Uh, I talked about both these books, Legacy and Wolfpack, phenomenal. And then we are planning some programming and events uh, in terms of having some people come and talk to the team, uh, people that have been a part of starting programs and people that have been a part of, of long lasting programs. Um, I'm cruising now. Okay. Uh, step three, playing the long game or step six, sorry, playing the long game. Um, okay. So this is probably the most important part and I left it for last where we're shorter on time. Um, but building trust, extremely important. I live and die off of this. I will spend so much time building relationships with my athletes because if they trust me, they trust the process. I know that they are going to give me more than they are going to give someone else. And so I will take the time to have, um, conversations with each of my athletes and get input on a regular basis. Um, you know, because I want them to believe in it. And if we 
don't have the same vision, showing them why. Um, why I'm, I'm, we're going with my vision. Um, I'm never gonna say no because I want that. I'm gonna say no because, and I'm going to explain it to them until I get some buy-in. And, and when you've built that trust, it's easier to say, um, you know, no, we're gonna go in this direction. Uh, you know, they, they, they truly believe in you. Um, instilling purpose and value. I already talked about the, the importance of that. If there's purpose and value behind what you are doing and you share it with them and sharing becomes trust. Um, if you share it with them, then that, that becomes so much more important to them and, and they're going to be more committed to accomplishing those goals. Engagement and happiness. Again, it's, you know, you're going to, you can always tell. And if, you know, if you guys are experienced coaches or whatever, I'm sure you've experienced athletes that are unhappy and their performance levels change. Um, and, and so, you know, it's important for me to be a part of that process. And then last but not least, evaluate and make it better. This, I'm not going to do everything right. I know that. Um, I think I'm perfect in most ways, but um, my parents tell me on the regular that I'm not. So, um, I know that there's going to be times where I'm going to have to adjust and change my methods and change my process. And, and I'm, you know, I'm open to that. And I know that that's going to be a reality of this process. So, um, being willing to, to not stand my ground when, when the team needs me. And that is it. I made it through. Sorry guys. So long. Hopefully you got a lot out of it, but I guess this is question time. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, just, um, a couple of thank yous on there. One, one I definitely wanted to to read to you because uh, it's from Mequon Tulpin, and Mequon is um, the high performance coordinator for Indigenous Sport and Wellness Ontario, and she actually helped me get a um, she helped me get some speakers and and you know some ideas related to this. But um, she just said, you know, really appreciate the thought and effort you put into this presentation. Delivered very well, and wanted to compliment you on that. And then thank she put you. the free word for thank you, which, and I'm hoping I'm not butchering it. I actually texted her and said, how do I say this? But <laughs> I believe it's miigwech. You're welcome. If I could say it back to you, well, you're welcome. I would. I'm yeah. sorry. So she's, she's helped me quite a bit. And then just, you know, uh, a couple other thank yous. You know, it was great. Look forward to the camps. And if you ever bring a satellite yeah. camp to Long Island. So. We will. Um, and then Jennifer in, in Hong Kong, thank you for staying up with us. <laughs> thank you, know. you yeah um so let me just pull down here mm -hmm. um yeah if you know what if anybody's got any questions i mean we've got got emily's email on there i don't see mm -hmm. any coming in it's more comments right now just a, yeah. a lot of thank yous which is awesome yeah great and i think if anyone listening to if you do have questions like i said use that or i didn't say but use that email feel free to reach out to me um you know, I, uh, I tried to stick along the things that you guys would want to hear about, but again, there's so many aspects to this that I didn't mention, you know, that, that are really important. Um, but I, I'm hoping that you'll take a lot of value out of this and you got to see a little bit more about my philosophies as well. Oh, nope. Just some more comments. Keep the excitement and enthusiasm. Thank you. And good luck. So great job, Emily. I appreciate Thanks. it very much. Yeah, appreciate. Um, oh, you can, I don't know if you can hear my dogs growling in the background now. Sorry. Okay. Um, um, yeah, no problem. This was a gr this was great. I appreciate um, everyone that was listening and everyone that's going to listen. And um, you know, hopefully, you guys are all going to be pit pit fans. Uh, you know, in the near future. So you know what? One question did come in. Sure. Um, and I butchered her name, so I, uh, Miguan. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I just texted her again. Said, "Can you please tell me how to say it?" But. <laughs> Have you any thoughts towards Indigenous scholarships or outreach at Pitt? You know what? Um, it's it's not an area I'm familiar with. So, you know, I want to apologize, first of all. Um, you know, but I think for me, um, you know, hopefully this, you know, me sharing this email is going to, you know, potentially start that conversation. I'd encourage you to reach out to me um, and help, you know, by educating me. Uh, you know, it's, it's, again, like I said, it's not an area I'm very familiar with. Um, but not something I'm, I'm, you know, would, would shy away from. So uh, I encourage you to reach out and, um, you know, maybe we can start that conversation. I want the best for the program. I want the best for the sport. So whatever, you know, however we get there, we get there. Yeah. And I, I think there's some, I'd have to look into it more, but if I recall correctly, there's some Pell Grant eligibility. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that's something to look at, but uh, yeah, it, 
nope. You know what? That that cleans up our Q and A and in our chat. That's awesome. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Emily, thank you very much for attending. Um, we're back on in, uh, in 55 minutes here with Connor Wilson from LAX All-Stars and uh, CCNY, Club Team uh, D3 program in New York. So, um, Emily, you have a great night. Appreciate it. We'll be in touch. Thank yep. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. <laughs>